No water slides, no go-karts, no video arcades, no kids clubs, no big lavish production shows. Whether you've sailed with Oceana Cruises many times before, or you're only exploring booking your first cruise with them now, you're probably not into those big ship resort style amenities. That's not the appeal of a small to mid-sized luxury line like Oceana. Yet you may be wondering to yourself, what is there to do on an Oceana cruise ship? We've sailed on Oceana's smaller, older R-Class ships and on its brand new, bigger Allura-Class ship, the Vista. And one of the things we personally love about Oceana as a line is how consistent the guest experience is across their eight-ship fleet. The ships may be different ages and sizes, yet there's a distinct Oceana feel no matter which ship you're on. In this video, we want to share with you 11 things you need to do on board an Oceania cruise ship. Some of these are rather obvious and surely most of you would already know about them. A few may be lesser known secrets. And if you haven't experienced them before, we certainly encourage you to seek them out the next time you sail with Oceania. Regardless, these are some of the things we think help make the Oceania cruising experience enjoyable and unique, and that we recommend you try for yourself. Thing number one, eat the ice cream. Oceania prides itself on having the finest cuisine at sea. And sure, we could tell you to get the beef wellington in the grand dining room, or the whole main lobster in the polo grill, or the sushi in the terrace cafe. But no, we want to start with the simple pleasures. One thing you absolutely need to do on an Oceania ship is eat the ice cream. And you're probably wondering, why are they suggesting this when every cruise ship has ice cream? And our answer to you is two words, Humphrey Slocum. Humphrey Slocum Ice Cream is a gourmet ice cream brand from the San Francisco Bay Area. They create really interesting and unique adult flavors, their term, like after school special, brown butter, white miso apple, and their signature flavor, Secret Breakfast which is a bourbon flavor ice cream with cornflake cookies. This ice cream is so good. Nom, 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 nom. And Oceania puts a new flavor on offer every day. So make sure to check it out often to see what the flavor of the day is. And here's a hot tip. There are two spots on the ship where you can get it. The ice cream station at Waves Grill on the pool deck and also inside the buffet in Terrace Cafe. And the Humphrey Slocum flavors being served are usually different in every location. So if you don't like one choice, go check out the other location. Or, you know, get them both. You're on vacation. Thing number two, go to baristas. That's Oceana's coffee house slash cafe. And in our opinion, it's some of the best coffee at sea. They serve Ely coffee products, so their specialty is espresso and other Italian-style coffee drinks. Baristas is one of the more lively social hubs on each of Oceana's ships. Though on Vista and the upcoming Allura, Oceana has like really committed to making this coffee shop venue a destination. It's a big, beautiful, spacious, bright location up on deck 14 with panoramic views out over the pool deck. Seating is fairly plentiful with even some larger booths accommodating groups of up to five or six people. Uh, it's a great place to sit and chat or to get some work done. Uh, there's a little buffet serving station here with small bites available throughout the morning and afternoons. So sandwiches, charcuterie meats and cheeses, cookies. Though in the Allure class ships, the real winner in baristas is the newly added bakery. This is a small French inspired bakery counter that offers a selection of fantastic pastries throughout the day. There are croissants and donuts and other baked good treats. 
Uh, though the real highlight is that every day there's a different flavor beignet, financier, quiche, and brioche sandwich bite. So it's a great option for light lunch or a between meal snack. So, so tasty. Thing number three, Aquamar Kitchen. Now, we promise all of these tips aren't going to be food and beverage related, but allow us one more before we switch gears. And unfortunately, Aquamar Kitchen is only available on the Vista right now, though it is announced it will be on the Allura too. When we were on board Vista recently, Aquamar became quickly one of our favorite dining spots. It's open for breakfast and lunch and serves lighter, more health conscious and plant forward dishes. Oceania's new Allura ships are embracing a health and wellness focus, and Aquamar Kitchen is obviously positioned as an extension of the same named Aquamar Spa and Vitality Center, which is the fitness center and spa area. The kitchen has a fast casual vibe with a communal table in the open kitchen area, though there are lots of individual tables if you want to sit alone and have a longer meal. The lunch menu especially is quite extensive, And while vegetarians, vegans, and folks with gluten-free or paleo diets will certainly be pleased with the offerings, there's a little something here for everyone. If you like avocado toast or energy bowls, this is your spot for breakfast. And the smoothies and juices are outstanding. And for lunch, the burger and salad options are also fantastic. It's proof that healthy doesn't mean unsavory. Thing number four, the captain's welcome. This is an event that's not wholly unique to Oceana. I mean, other cruise lines offer some version of a cocktail party meet and greet with the ship's captain and and the officers. Nevertheless, Oceana's captain's welcome party is really festive, yet relaxed. There's live music and canapes. It's a, you know, warm, lively affair. Uh, We always appreciate the opportunity to meet the crew and and all those who work so hard to make our cruise a fantastic time. Uh, Indeed, it's usually held on the first full day of the cruise, so it's a good opportunity to go and learn who's who on the leadership team. Uh, And then it becomes kind of a fun game to spot them around the ship for the rest of the cruise. But it's also a great time to mix and mingle with other passengers. Plus, if you like free wine and cocktails, uh, here's your chance. Oceana is not all-inclusive when it comes to premium drinks, and even the Simply More package only gets you select wine and beers during lunch and dinner seatings. So alcoholic beverages like cocktails are going to cost you extra. There is, by the way, a happy hour special that's run most nights. And I guess that could be its own tip, but I'll just mention it here quickly as a kind of bonus tip. Oceana offers two for one of the same cocktail. So most days that happy hour is at 5 to 6 p.m. in all the lounges. And then again, a late night from 1030 to 1130 up in the Horizons Observation Lounge. Anyhow, back to the captain's welcome. Personally, I spent a good number of years in graduate school uh, working on my master's and my Ph.D., Uh, where my fellow grad students and I would hunt down every campus reception and event with free food and drink that we could find. Uh, I like to say you can take the student out of grad school, but you can't take the grad school out of the student, by which I mean I'm no longer a poor, starving grad student, yet I still get like strangely animated over any opportunity to get free food or alcohol. Uh, Anyhow, on our latest Vista Cruise, On the night of the captain's welcome, they actually offered complimentary cocktails in multiple bars across the ship from 6 to 8 p.m. So even if you didn't go to the reception up in Horizons, you could still benefit from the perk. Uh, Really nice of of Oceana to do that. Uh, We might have stopped in on a couple other bars on our way down to dinner that night. Maybe. By the way, if you're finding these tips helpful, or if you're a regular Oceana cruiser, or someone who's simply curious to learn more about cruising on premium, luxury, and ultra-luxury lines, please take a second here to subscribe to Calling All Ports. We've been at this YouTube thing for just over a year now. We're still relatively young and, and small as a channel, 
Uh, those subscriptions really do help us grow, and they also just make us happy and let us know we're doing something good. So thanks in advance for your support. Thing number five, the launderette. Now, doing your own laundry may not be the most exciting activity on a cruise ship, but it sure is nice to have the option. Other cruise lines have self-service laundry rooms on board, though some will only have one or two per ship, and not all are complimentary, you'll have to pay per load. But Oceania has a self-service laundrette on nearly every passenger deck. Plus, use of the washers and dryers is free. There's even free laundry detergent, but you'll need to bring your own dryer sheets and fabric softener. Each laundrette has three washing machines and three dryers, plus there's an iron, and even though the ironing board is oddly short, it still does the trick, and it saves us from having to pack wrinkle release spray. And the great thing is that the passenger behavior on Oceania's laundrettes is remarkably civil. We've had some, let's say, impolite experiences in laundry rooms on board ultra luxury ships, and while we haven't experienced it yet ourselves, we have it on good authority that the self-serve laundry aboard Cunard is a blood sport. The Oceania launderettes, in our experiences at least, have been relatively uncrowded and everyone's very courteous. Definitely take advantage of this free laundry option. Thing number six, visit the sports deck. Oceania ships can be a little or lacking in the area of program daily activities and entertainment, or at least that's a complaint we've heard from a lot of other passengers. I mean, personally, we generally enjoy the options that the Oceania entertainment team offer, as we'll talk about, you know, more in, in a minute with the next tip. But Oceania's ships are great if you like to kind of freestyle and entertain yourself, particularly if you're a fan of classic cruise ship deck games like croquet or bocce ball, shuffleboard, bag toss, or you know cornhole if you're from the Midwest, go Badgers. Uh, the sports deck facilities on the Vista are really amazing with a pickleball court, a golf driving range, and a truly impressive putting green that verges on a full-featured mini golf course. Diana and I are, are big shuffleboard fans, and, and we've actually struck up some great friendships with other passengers while playing shuffleboard on Oceana ships. Shout out to Flo and Alex and Team Shuffleboard. Thing number seven, collect big O points. Oceania's daily activities program includes enrichment talks, fitness classes, cooking and art classes, spa wellness events, dance classes, bingo, casino tournaments, the latter for an extra charge, Though at the core of the daily program are a number of classic cruise pastimes hosted by the entertainment team, including shuffleboard, bocce ball, bag of bean toss, or bags or cornhole if you prefer, top toss, and of course, team trivia. Again, these are mostly the usual cruise line activities, but we really enjoy doing them on Oceania for a couple of reasons. First, trivia and the hosted games get a pretty decent turnout on Oceania better than what we've seen on some other lines. So they're lively and decently competitive, which makes the games more fun, even though it's ultimately a friendly collegial atmosphere. It's not cutthroat or anything like that. It also tends to be the same subset of passengers who participate in these activities on the regular. So after a couple of days, you start to see familiar faces and it's a great way to make some new friendships on board. However, the second thing we really like about these hosted games, and it's the title we gave to this tip, you can win big O points for participating. And what are big O points, you may ask? Well, they serve as Oceania currency that you can redeem for branded swag. For us, at least, games are more fun when you're actually competing for a prize. And if you play enough, the big O points can really add up. 
So on the last full day of the cruise, the entertainment team hosts a big O points redemption event where you can exchange your points for things like Oceania branded keychains, golf balls, mugs, hats, tote bags, even shirts and jackets. Thing number eight, listen to the string quartet. This is one of those signature Oceana touches that I'm fairly certain they've been doing since their very beginning over 20 years ago now. Each evening they'll have a string quartet play one or usually two sets in one of the ship's main public spaces. It's not hard to find them, you just follow the music, you'll hear it throughout the ship. Uh, On the Vista, that's in the Grand Lounge. Uh, On the R-Class ships, it's in the Atrium. Typically, there's an early evening set starting around 5.45, like right before dinner. And then there's also a post-dinner set around 7.45 or 8.30 p.m. The exact schedule can vary a little day by day. Regardless, they're excellent musicians, and we always find it enjoyable to sit and listen, even if it's only for 10 or 15 minutes on the way to or from dinner. And they mix up the set list. Sometimes they'll play standard fare like, you know, Baroque Classical, But other times they'll play Broadway show tunes, 50s, 60s pop songs, even interpretations of hard rock hits by Led Zeppelin or Queen. Thing number nine, afternoon tea. Okay, our last three tips are going to be food and beverage related again. But hey, Oceania's cuisine really is that good. There is another event that's not uncommon aboard cruise ships but Oceania does afternoon tea really well. And don't take our word for it. Gary Bembridge of Tips for Travelers has said many times that this is one of his favorite cruise afternoon teas as well. I'm fairly certain they put on afternoon tea every day, or nearly every day from four to five, though it's certainly most popular on sea days. It's not the most traditional afternoon tea service in the sense that they don't bring tiered stands to your table where you eat them in order from sandwiches to scones to cakes and sweets. Still, it's a seated afternoon tea and all the bits are there. Servers come around with trays and trolleys and you can choose what you'd like. And the food's really good, although you need to be careful you don't nosh too much and spoil dinner. Plus, there's always music to enjoy. Usually it's the string quartet again, though occasionally they'll sub in some of the ship's other performers. Thing number 10, dine in the grand dining room. This might be the most important tip of all. Don't sleep on Oceana's main dining room, which they call the grand dining room. It's easy to get taken in by the specialty restaurants on board, and and they're really good. However, Oceana's MDR is a real gem. To start, the space is elegant, especially on Vista. The grand dining room is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the most visually stunning main dining rooms that we've seen on a ship. And it doesn't only look good, the space is actually partitioned wonderfully. So even when it's packed full, it never feels crowded or noisy. And the food, though, is is top notch. Plus, the menu is constantly rotating. The cuisine here is grounded in classical French dishes and techniques, including a nightly selection of Jacques Pepin's signature dishes. Although there's always a variety of global dishes included, sometimes it's Italian, other nights it's Indian or Pan-Asian. There's also always a selection of lighter, healthier Aquamar spa options too, plus some plant-based selections for the vegetarians and, and the vegan diners. Honestly, there have been times when we ditched out on our specialty dining reservations to eat in the MDR instead. It's, it's just that good. The Grand Dining Room is also open for breakfast every day and lunch some days. It's always open for lunch on sea days. So even if you're hooked on the specialty restaurants for dinner, we encourage you to at least give the MDR a try for breakfast or lunch. Thing number 11, the buffet. So we'll end our list with one of the most ubiquitous cruise ship features of them all. 
Like with the MDR in our last tip, you might think it's strange for someone to tell you that you need to go to the cruise ship buffet. Every ship has one, and often the buffet's not all that remarkable, downright terrible even. But on Oceania, the Terrace Cafe is really quite special. And so more than anything, we're just here to say, don't skip it. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, so at least try to give it a try a couple times during your stay. For one thing, the service here is great and it actually feels more like a dining room with white tablecloths and proper ceramic dishware and table service beverages and so on. Also, up at the buffet itself, servers plate all of your food, which we really like. It's cleaner and healthier and cuts down on food waste. But most importantly, the quality of food here is outstanding. Options rotate daily, especially for lunch and dinner, and everything's super fresh. There are high quality cuts of meat and seafood. There are high end ingredients like caviar, lamb, sashimi, and whole lobster tails. And quite a few of these items are cooked to order right in front of you at the grill station. Our only regret is that we don't follow this tip enough ourselves because we're probably too hung up on tip number 10. We're always heading straight down to the MDR and we don't head up to the buffet often enough. And that's it, our recommendations for 11 things you need to do on board an Oceana cruise ship. Uh, if you're curious to hear more of our thoughts on the brand new Oceana Vista ship in particular, please check out this video here. Uh, we filmed it on board the Vista, documenting our boarding day and our initial impressions of the ship. Now is also the time that we kindly ask you to subscribe to our channel as well as please give this video a like. Got any thoughts on the tips we've shared in this video, or do you have any favorite things on board Oceana's ships that we missed? Go ahead and add a comment. We read and respond to every comment, uh, and we're always curious to learn new things and hear different opinions. Until next time, be seeing you.